Good day everyone and welcome to Nurses Lecturing YouTube channel. My name is Mercy Mary, popularly known as the Nurse with the Difference, and I make learning easy and accessible for students. Today we're going to be talking about anemia. By the end of the class, you should be able to tell me what is anemia, the types of anemia, the causes of anemia, the pathophysiology of anemia, the clinical manifestation, nursing diagnosis, and also the nursing intervention when it comes to anemia. But before we go into details, can you click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification button so you don't miss out. Let's go there. Right, welcome back. Like Ella said, today we're going to be talking about anemia. What is anemia? Anemia is a condition in which the hemoglobin concentration is lower than normal. Anemia is a condition in which the hemoglobin concentration is lower than normal. Or you can say anemia is a condition in which the red blood cell concentration is lower than normal. Most times when we hear red, when we hear anemia, what comes to our mind is that there is a reduction in blood, that there is blood loss, there is shortage of blood. But to be specific, what is being affected in anemia is the red blood cells and the hemoglobin. Remember in our previous class, we said that the hemoglobin helps in the transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide. So when there's a reduced concentration of hemoglobin or the red blood cell, we say anemia has taken place. Then that takes us to the types of anemia. There are various types of anemia, but we have five here on the board. The first is the aplastic anemia. The aplastic anemia occurs as a result of the inability of the bone marrow to produce enough red blood cell. The bone marrow is not producing enough red blood cell. That is when we say aplastic anemia has taken place. Let me go back it again. Aplastic anemia occurs when the bone marrow is unable to produce enough red blood cells. It's unable to keep up with the production of red blood cells. In aplastic anemia, what is affected is the bone marrow. Then the second type of anemia we'll be discussing is hemolytic anemia. In hemolytic anemia, there's excessive destruction of red blood cells. Normally, after 120 days, the red blood cells are bound to die. Yes. But in hemolytic anemia, there's excessive destruction of the red blood cell. That the bone marrow cannot even compensate for it. The bone marrow cannot like, okay, let me compensate for it. So that's what happened in hemolytic anemia. And you know when there's excessive destruction of red blood cell, definitely there's going to be a reduction in the hemoglobin concentration in the body. Then the third is megaloblastic anemia. Megaloblastic anemia. Megaloblastic anemia occurs as a result of deficiency in vitamin B12 and folic acid. Megaloblastic anemia occurs as a result of what deficiency in vitamin B12 and folic acid. Remember in our previous classes when we were talking about red blood cells and erythropoiesis, we said that vitamin B12 and folic acid, they are very, very important when it comes to the maturation of red blood cells. In megaloblastic anemia, the cells are bigger than normal. It's mega, big. That's why I drew this thing here, mega. In megaloblastic anemia, the cells are bigger than normal. And it's as a result of what? Deficiency of vitamin B12 and folic acid. Then the next one is iron deficiency anemia. Iron deficiency anemia. Iron deficiency anemia, as the name implies, occurs as a result of deficiency in iron. There's not enough iron in the body. Or there is iron in the body, but the body is not absorbing it. 
there's enough ion but the body is not absorbing it so ion deficiency anemia means that there is no enough ion we are not having enough ion to produce what hemoglobin and you know when you ever you hear ion hem should come to your mind because ion is very very important when it comes to the production of hem then the final one which is anemia of chronic disease occurs as a result of other underlying condition for example there is an infection it can lead to anemia um kidney disease yeah kidney disease or heart disease can actually lead to anemia in terms of kidney when the kidney is affected the production of erythropoietin is impaired we all know that erythropoietin is produced in the kidney and it's been transported to the bone marrow when it gets to the bone marrow it stimulates the bone marrow to actually produce enough red blood cells remember we have five types of anemia we have the aplastic anemia we have the hemolytic anemia we have the megaloblastic anemia we have the ion deficiency anemia and we have anemia of chronic diseases that takes us to the causes of anemia are the various causes of anemia the first is inadequate production of red blood cell which simply means that the body is not producing enough red blood cells the bone marrow is not producing enough red blood cells so when there's no enough red blood cells there's no hemoglobin definitely anemia will take place then the second is premature destruction of red blood cells Red blood cells ought to live for 120 days. But when they are not up to 120 days, they die on the way. Like in sickle cell, we can say there's premature destruction of red blood cells. And for those that have a um, deficiency in glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, it can actually lead to anemia too. So when there's premature destruction of red blood cells, it is going to lead to what? anemia. Then the third is blood loss hemorrhage bleeding when there's bleeding you agree with me that a, a, a large normal of blood might go out of the body and that can result in anemia then the fourth is nutrient deficiency that individual is not taking the appropriate nutrients there's no vitamin b12 there's no folic acid there's no iron these um, nutrients are not enough in the body remember in our anthropoiesis class we talked about the ingredients that's the factors needed for erythropoiesis to take place but when there is no um, folic vitamin b12 there is no folic acid there is no um, ion definitely anemia is likely going to take place then the other one is hereditary factor for example your sickle cell anemia yeah sickle cell anemia is one of the hereditary factor that can result in anemia sickle cell sorry then the other one is chronic diseases for example there is chronic kidney disease infection all these can result in anemia then that takes us to the pathophysiology when we hear anemia as we all know we said that anemia is as a result of um, the reduction in the hemoglobin concentration in the body or the red blood cell concentration in the body and we all know that hemoglobin helps to transport oxygen and carbon dioxide if there's now reduced um, oxygen hemoglobin in the body there's reduced red blood cell in the body definitely there's going to be reduced oxygen circulation in the body there will be reduced oxygen in the body the tissues in the body will not be getting enough oxygen first of all you see this person very very tired the person will be fatigued having shortness of breath increased heart rate chest pain you know the heart is not working very very fast to see if it can compensate the whole story the whole thing that is taking place in the body so the heart is trying to work very very fast now we have chest pain we have headache we have dizziness and inability to concentrate these are the likely signs and symptoms that are going to pop up it's likely signs and symptoms that are going to pop up when you are talking about um, anemia one thing I want you to know in the part of physiology, you don't have to know or cram the whole book or know too much. The first you have to know is that there's a reduction in the hemoglobin concentration. And when there's a reduction in the hemoglobin concentration, definitely there's going to be a reduced oxygen circulation in our body. And when there's a reduced oxygen circulation in our body, the individual will not be able to carry out that activity he or she used to take place, carry out before. 
So then you're going to be fatigued, shortness of breath, increased heart rate, chest pain, headache, dizziness, and inability to concentrate. Next, we are going to be talking about the nursing diagnosis and the nursing intervention. So we're going to be talking about the nursing diagnosis now, our roles, our responsibility. Fine. The first nursing diagnosis I have here for anemia is fatigue related to decreased hemoglobin concentration evidenced by inability of patients to carry out activity of daily living. Fatigue can also be related to diminished oxygen carrying capacity, evidenced by inability of the patient to carry out activity of daily living. We all know the function of hemoglobin. So when it is reduced, definitely fatigue is going to take place. So that's why we have fatigue. The another nursing diagnosis for anemia is imbalanced nutrition, less than body requirements, related to inadequate intake of essential nutrients evidenced by weight loss. There is imbalanced nutrition, less than body requirements, related to inadequate intake of essential nutrients evidenced by weight loss. Now another nursing diagnosis is ineffective tissue perfusion. It simply means that the tissues are not getting enough oxygen. That's the meaning of ineffective tissue perfusion. The tissues are not what getting enough oxygen. Ineffective tissue perfusion related to insufficient hemoglobin evidenced by pallor and patients appearing pay. There's a possibility of having a lot of other diagnoses such as deficient knowledge, anxiety. This patient is anxious about the present condition. There are lots of diagnoses for anemia, but we'll just pick just this three to explain. Then that takes us to the management. What are we going to do? Our patient is having anemia as a student nurse or as a nurse. What are you going to do? One thing that is very, very important as a nurse is for you to carry out proper assessment. You have to carry out what? Proper assessment on your patient to know what is wrong. Is your patient looking pale? Is your patient looking happy? Is your patient tired? You have to assess this patient thoroughly. Then what you also take note is that there's going to be a change in diet for this patient, a modification of diet. This patient has to be taking a lot of food, rich in vitamin B12, rich in iron, rich in folic acid. This patient has to take food rich in those things like a leafy vegetable. So this patient has to take them. They also supplements and vitamins. You see in the hospital, they give them supplements, vitamin B, that's the iron supplements. They give them the folic acid, they, they are being given. So they will be able to build their red blood cells and also build their hemoglobin concentration. Then depending on the severity of the anemia, blood transfusion comes in, oxygen therapy comes in depending on how severe this particular anemia is so your nurse's responsibility during blood um, during before and after blood transfusion should be taken into consideration i believe we should treat blood transfusion as a topic some other time then oxygen therapy is very very important to ensure adequate tissue perfusion then health education is very very important most patients, most relative, they don't really know what anemia is all about. They don't know um, how to prevent, um, how to prevent it, what and what to eat. So it's our duty as a nurse to help educate this patient on anemia, and also for those that are taking iron, you as a nurse have to tell them that iron is likely going to make their feces black. So they should not be perturbed. They should not be disturbed when taking iron and their feces come out black. Then, in terms of cure, the fact is, does anemia has cure? There's only one thing that can change everything, which is bone marrow transplant. But bone marrow transplant is rare, and it takes time, and I believe it's more is expensive. So during bone marrow transplant, they have to look for a bone marrow that's compatible with that patient's bone marrow. So they can't just wake up and like I want to transplant bone marrow. It takes a lot of time. It has to you have to it's like cross matching. You have to cross match the blood. You have to cross match the bone marrow to see if it actually fits perfectly well in that patient. Do you get that? Now I'm going to tell you the complications and how to prevent anemia. In terms of prevention, emphasis should be on diet. Emphasis should be on diet. Patients should be encouraged to take food rich in iron. 
vitamin B12, folate, and also vitamin C because these things are very very important in the production of red blood cells food like your dark greenish vegetables your vegetables your spinach your soya meats your um, your fruits like your oranges your apples your pears patients should be encouraged to take that to prevent anemia then in terms of complication one of the complication is lack of productivity this person with anemia is usually very very tired definitely productivity is impaired this individual is unable to carry out those activity he or she normally carry out before then the other complication is heart failure the heart has been trying ever since to ensure that it pumps blood and supplies enough oxygen around the body but now it's been overworked up so what happened heart failure can take place then the other one is problem during pregnancy pregnant women might be very very they might be very very tired like extremely tired during labor because they don't have enough strength due to the decrease of the hemoglobin concentration and also during fetal development there might be some problems because there's not enough vitamin b12 ion for the baby to actually develop properly Thank you very much for staying tuned. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification button so you don't miss out. And also don't forget to share if you got value from our class. Thank you very much and do have a wonderful day ahead.